Monterey, California, an idyllic seaside town. Tourists cram its busy streets, modern comforts at every turn. The bay is an ocean sanctuary. It's home to hundreds of species from up and down the California coast. But as I walk around this tourist town, I got the feeling that it wasn't always like this. Long before people came to Monterey to watch fish, they came here to catch them, and they caught a lot of one fish in particular. And to get some more answers, I needed someone with historical knowledge and a sardine in his pocket. So this is the Monterey sardine. This fish produces a lot of oil, and it's large, it creates a lot of fish meal. And so, so it's fish, fish meal being used for fertilizer and animal feed. Uh, and there was big money in this. Can I eat that one? Yeah. War had created a demand for a cheap and healthy source of protein, but the real money was in the fish heads and tails and guts that were cooked down and fed to animals or used as fertilizer. Between the two world wars, Monterey became the sardine capital of the world, eventually immortalized in John Steinbeck's book, Cannery Row. It seemed like there was an endless supply of sardines out there in the bay. You can probably tell where this is headed. At the peak of this industry, how many sardines are they pulling out of Monterey Bay? An average of 235,000 tons of sardine out of that bay every season. Uh, in 1930, at the annual sardine conference... I bet they have killer parties at the <laughs> World Sardine Conference. But they Fish Again presented a paper at this conference showing, unless you guys take smaller catches, this fish is going to collapse in a few years. And nobody paid any attention. In the years after World War II, sardine boats went out like they always had, but came back empty. Because of overfishing and nature's cycles, the sardines had disappeared, and Monterey's canneries with them. Cannery Row's famous character, Doc, was based on Steinbeck's friend, Ed Ricketts, a marine biologist who worked out of this lab. Steinbeck and Ricketts developed a philosophy of nature based on the tide pools around where they lived in Monterey. That species that live near one another are interconnected, often in complex ways that we can't understand and that remain invisible to us. Ed, along with other scientists, have been warning fishermen for years, you can't just take as much as you want of a single species out of the ocean and not expect any consequences. It seems like an obvious idea today, but the field of ecology was just being born at the time. Since the arrival of Europeans in Monterey Bay, there's been a pattern of taking one species out of the ocean until there was no more. Whales, fish like salmon and sardines, and otters. And when the otters were gone, animals they ate, like sea urchins and abalone, exploded. The kelp forest was destroyed, and an entire ecosystem was injured. One day, people woke up, and it just seemed like there wasn't any more sardines coming out of this bay. Do you have any sardines? What happened then? So tourism was really a, a saving point for Monterey, and aquarium is hugely important to Monterey. I mean, uh, this street totally changed when they opened this aquarium in 1984. Years after the sardine boats left, nature began to slowly move back in, and the aquarium moved in with it. Now a whole new ecosystem has sprung up, a population of scientists and nature lovers connected and working together to carry on Ed Ricketts' philosophy. And these days, Monterey Bay is not just about hooking fish, it's about getting people hooked on nature. They're not exporting sardine cans, they're exporting sardine fans. Stay curious. When we say whales, we're talking about the order of animals called cetaceans, which are further divided into two subgroups, tooth whales and baleen whales. Despite living their whole lives in the water, whales are in fact mammals. They give birth to live young, they nurse with milk, and they're warm-blooded. They even have hair. Before they're born, whales are covered in a layer of fuzz called lanugo, and some even keep hair as adults. Now, like all mammals and other tetrapods, whales are descendants from ancient fish that crawled out of the water about 375 million years ago. But for some reason, cetaceans turned around and crawled right back in the ocean. 